everyone, and welcome to the Path 11 podcast with your hosts, Mike and April. Today, we're interviewing an author, Gordon Asher Davison, who has written the book, The Transfiguration of Our World, How a Light Alliance is Transforming Darkness and Creating a New Earth. Davison offers a big picture perspective where the earth being a part of a solar system affects the greater whole. What happens here matters beyond our planet. Davidson presents a synthetic overview of the causes behind the current world upheaval and the immediate and long-term goals of a well-developed plan of light for the transfiguration of our world. This book and his work explores financial, political, and media reforms, a more enlightened use of resources, the regeneration of the environment, and a renaissance of spiritual cooperation between humanity and the subtle spiritual worlds, including galactic civilizations. We think you'll really enjoy this podcast. This is the first podcast of its kind where we actually get to explore this topic. Well, we'd like to welcome Gordon to our show today. Thanks for joining us so early. We know it's about 6 a.m., I think, where you are. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for getting up so early to talk about some really enlightening stuff here. Now, you're the author of the book, The Transfiguration of Our World. And I have to say, when I was kind of first reading some information about it, it almost sounds like a wild sci-fi novel or like a movie that could be made. <laughs> um, yes. And I'm not even quite sure where to ask you to start, but if you can um, maybe give our listeners a little bit of an overview about what this book is and the idea kind of behind it and all the work that you've done over mm-hmm. the past 40, 45 years or so, right? You've kind of delved yes. into this. So you have just have a ton of, of knowledge and history and experience, and this could probably be a three-hour show. But, uh, yeah, wherever you'd like to start to provide our listeners with some background, that would be great. Okay, sure. Well, probably it would be fair to give a little bit of information about how I came to uh, be able to provide all this kind of information, since that's what people often want to know. And um, so I have been meditating for 40 years. I have been deeply involved in studying various spiritual and esoteric traditions for my entire life. And at at the same time, I've also been very, very active as a social change um, artist and creator and have started uh, four nonprofit organizations and three for-profit organizations. Been very involved in um, everything from social investing. I was the founding executive director of the first social investment national professional association. Very involved in environmental movement and, and also deeply involved in psychological study and work especially helping people understand and work with their subconscious and integrate that with their conscious and superconscious. So that's been another very major area. I'm, I'm the kind of person who specializes in being a generalist, and I'm interested in everything. So I've always um, you know, gone into whatever interests me, and that's taken me on a lot of different places. I lived in India for two and a half years as a Peace Corps volunteer. I was very active in uh, the start of the environmental and the peace movements and many, many things. Um, so that my, my meditation work has grown over the years into a very, very deep practice. And I, at some point in that process, I, was, I, developed a, I made contact with uh, very advanced beings who are actually deeply engaged in the process of helping our humanity and our planet move successfully through this crisis that we're in the middle of. And that has been um, uh, the source of the information that you find in my book, The Transfiguration of Our World. And this is a particular spiritual master who is deeply engaged in this process of assisting humanity uh, to move through this uh, successfully. It, It is a major crisis we're in the middle of, but it's a very, very great opportunity and trans transformation leading to transfiguration that we are going through. And so I have um, gotten lots and lots of information for the last 20 years uh, from this particular individual master. And 
eventually was asked to bring this all out and share it publicly. I hadn't been sharing it publicly. So I started doing that about three and a half years ago with an international teleseminar and then wrote the book and put, put it all out in that form. And the, the interest in the book has been fantastic. The response has been wonderful and it's really doing well. And so I'm really, uh, it's about the, what's happening on Earth today and why things are in such chaos as they are. And this has a great deal to do with the fact that there have been very powerful controlling forces on our planet for a long time who have set up the system to benefit themselves at the expense of everyone else, as I think more and more of humanity is now fully realizing that's the 1% and the 99% is now become uh, clear to more and more people, which is a very important recognition that we needed in our, in our world. And that sets the stage for a... And people are also recognizing how deeply flawed and corrupted, as Bernie Sanders says, the, the entire system is, both the financial system and the political system, and that it is time for a real reorganization, reordering of our entire system. And that is very much what is underway right now. So a lot of this has come about because there has been a um, there was a long time ago uh, a certain group of beings who came into this planet from outside the planet um, who uh, came in here and set themselves up to rule. This was a group from outside Earth and they established systems of, they were very experienced at this kind of thing and they were able to establish systems to set up control and actually um, exploit humanity and do whatever they chose with the planet, pretty much. And that was present. It was known to be here. Uh, it was they, they came in here. There was protection around our Earth all of these millennia. But they entered in here through a kind of time-space anomaly and established themselves. But they were discovered by the, the light forces, the spiritual guardians of our planet. And there was a decision whether or not to allow them to stay here or remove them. And at that time, eventually, after much debate, it was decided to allow them to remain so that humanity would be, throughout its evolution, faced with a choice between the, the, the path of self-interest and greed and selfishness and all those that way of life versus love and service and all the rest. And of course, the great spiritual teachers have come forth on our planet like you know, Christ, Jesus, and Buddha, and Muhammad, and many, many, many teachers to show us the path of love and service. And humanity has been faced with making a choice between those two ways of life ever since. And we make those choices, we experience the karma of those choices, and hopefully we learn to make better choices in the future. And that has been the story of our evolution through multiple lifetimes, as, as I see it. So that's, that's been the, un, the unfolding process here. And, of course, those, those control forces have been very successful at setting up systems like um, interest-based money and the Federal Reserve systems and all over the similar systems all over the world to benefit themselves and control the financial system and thereby also control the political system, which they have done. And so this has proceeded through many, many cycles of many different civilizations, very ancient ones, as well as more modern times. And these are the kind of forces that were behind Hitler and the Japanese when they actually created the Axis powers and tried to <clears throat> take over external control of the world. And that was thwarted by the allied powers, who were the light powers, with support from other civilizations from beyond the planet, who came in and supported and gave energy to the allies in order to be able to outlast the, the dark side. And they did. But those behind-the-scenes dark forces were not removed. They were only pushed back onto the astral plane and sealed up behind the door. And the only way they would have remained that way is if humanity had not indulged in the kind of energies and opened, reopened that door through greed, selfishness, and power over and all those things. And humanity did not keep that door closed, and they reemerged after the war and 
continued with their process of controlling. And that's what we've had in the world ever since. And we can sense and feel and see the way they have gained control over the media, over the, the political system, the, the health care system, all of it. And any, anyone who's paying at all attention will realize how much that's present. And anyone who's had any experience of trying to do anything that does, goes against the interests of those powers ha, knows very well that they will stop stop you and stop at nothing to stop people. And that's happened many, many times. So this all has continued up until and through 9-11. 9-11 was an was a inside job orchestrated by these powers in order to um, gain more control and instill more fear, because by having more fear within humanity, you gain more ability to control. And that was the purpose of that event. And it was an incredibly powerful event in human history, but not for the reasons that everyone thinks. What happened was, after 9-11, it was very clear that these powers, they passed the Patriot Act, they reduced the freedoms of people in the United States, they instilled worldwide fear of terrorism, they were able to invade the Middle East, they were hoped to get control of the oil, which did not work out that well. And they were on a path to actually really gain full control of the planet. And this was all very much um, known and observed by the solar level of our being. Now, this is that we're, we move into another dimension, another perspective, which is, you know, we think on planet Earth we're all by ourselves here and, you know, there's nobody else out there and we're just kind of floating in, this, in space <laughs> on our own which is nothing could be further from the truth. Um, we as a planet, Earth, are a chakra in the body of a greater being known as the solar system. Every planet is a chakra in that, in that system. And we actually are, are, because of this control that is present on Earth, have been holding back the evolution of the entire solar system for quite some time because of this dark, energy going on on planet Earth. When they did 9-11, it was very, very clear to the Solar Council, because there is a council at that level, it was very clear to them that they were on, a, uh, they were on their way to controlling Earth really even more. And at that point, a decision was made by the Solar Council to remove the leadership of the dark control forces from this planet. And that was and that was done by giving permission to the galactic civilizations, of which there are many around our Earth, to remove or turn to the light the, the extraterrestrial leadership of the dark side. And then in 2002, that was begun, and it's now complete, <clears throat> completely done, and all of those energies, those beings have been removed. That still leaves all of the human cooperators who worked with them through all this whole period uh, in in um, present on Earth, but that is part of the reason why the system is falling, is really spiraling down because of that lack of higher order leadership that they had, which they had some capacities that human beings don't have. So, what happened also with that solar decree was that the galactic civilizations were given permission to radiate more light and more love to our planet and increase that steadily and also to more openly and directly help and support all the human beings on our planet who are doing anything to bring in and support more light flowing to humanity, more understanding, anything to help raise human consciousness, improve the human condition in any way, all of those be all of those people are now given tremendous amount of support and energy. And every time we make a smallest decision to do something for the greater good, we are given more and more support to do that. And, there, and that's a very calibrated process because humanity, the, the galactic civilizations are very careful not to interfere with the free will of humanity. So we have to make the choices all along the way to free ourselves and to move into the higher consciousness, which we are doing radically everywhere in the world. And at each time we do that, more and more help can be given because that's our free will expressing our, our effort and our, our 
forward progress and then more help can be given. And that's an ongoing balancing that goes on all the time on our planet. So I'll just pause for a moment and see if you have any questions or comments. There's lots more to say, but I'll just stop there for a moment and see. <laughs> okay. okay. That was a definitely a great description and everything that I was looking for. Um, but for people who haven't really been exposed to this type of concept, when you're talking about they and talking about kind of the, the dark side and these negative energies and the light alliance, are you actually talking about, um, I don't know, a form of, of consciousness that's more on an astral plane? Or are you talking about some sort of extraterrestrial that has come to Earth and is embodying certain people, and these people are acting out this duality? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the original source of this, according to what I have received, and of course this is my perspective, and everyone's free to evaluate it using their own intuition and decide whether it's useful to you or not. Um, my perspective and what I've received is that there was a group of about 50 uh, predatory type species of, of um, extraterrestrials who came into our planet long ago. We're talking about millennia ago. And we're present here during some of the earlier civilizations that are not scientifically recognized but actually did exist, including um, Lemuria, Atlantis, and have been interfacing and interfering with these civilizations, in fact, caused the, the ending of, of, the, of the Atlantean civilization because they so corrupted the whole system that it had to be destroyed in order to purify the, the situation, the planet. It was so corrupted through genetic engineering, through a manipulation of matter, all kinds of things that went on. So they have been present all along. They were embodied as, as beings, yes, at that time. They interacted with humans and they interbred with some humans, is what I've been told. And so... But they were the ones who had, they had, because they had certain abilities, they had the capacity to exert a certain amount of telepathic control over human beings. They also um, could, to a certain degree, for, see the future and, and generate. Um, <clears throat> they were also very experienced in coming into a planet and setting up these control systems. They'd done this before. So they were able to infiltrate and have a huge influence. And because human beings saw their power and saw their abilities, they were willing to go with them and cooperate with them. And, and they got tremendous benefits from doing that. All the power and the money and the, the positions in the, in, in the control system that we see today. Those original group have now been completely removed from the planet and there are no more negative ET engagement on the planet or around our planet at this time. They are completely gone. That is a result of the solar decree that I mentioned and the, and the, and the, the help of the galactic civilizations who have you know, actually taken them off the planet and, and that's, that protection now around the Earth is absolute and there's no more interference possible. So, they, they, but the human beings who were, in, were cooperating with them for all the benefits they were receiving are still here. And, and, and so they're present and they're running the system. And they're trying to continue this, this, this banking system and the control of the political system and all the rest of it that they have, control of media, control of everything uh, that, that is um, present. And they're, they're failing because the Light Alliance is now directly interacting with much of the leadership on our planet. And this is, sounds fantastical, but it's actually real. And they are interfacing both primarily through uh, telepathic communication and also in some cases with direct uh, communication with major world leaders actually meeting them and being told about what is going on and what the plan is and how humanity is intended to be liberated. And that is in process. And we have many uh, people, leaders, world leaders, who are emerging, who are representing the exact plan of the Light Alliance. And one good, very good example is Pope Francis, who 
in his statements and in his act- actions, he has been overlighted with a very, very powerful spiritual energy of multiple different lighted beings. And the outline he gives of the problems of our world and the problems with capitalism, the problem of the poor and the environment, the, the urgency and need for the protection of the environment, all of these things are exactly the plan that the Light Alliance is, is, is holding and working towards. So he is a direct spokesperson for all of this. And it is <laughs> probably the most unexpected source of this kind of um, world leadership that you ever could imagine. But there it is. It emerges wherever it emerges. And it is there. <clears throat> and there are also many, many other world leaders who are in contact and know about this and are working together now to really create a whole new world here for us and help us do it. We are, we, and there's been so much contact now between the Light Alliance and humanity that it's now called the Earth Galactic Light Alliance because there's so many people on Earth who know about it and are working closely with it. And this includes the spiritual masters who we've who have been on uh, close to humanity all these centuries as well as multiple galactic civilizations. <laughs> And so the plan is we are going to have a complete reorganization of the financial system because that is the core of how the power is held in our world. And the whole interest-based money system is going to be changed. We will have one currency worldwide backed by gold and commodities without any interest involved whatsoever. That will be a worldwide standard currency which will then all national currencies will be convertible into or out of it based on the strength of the national economy of each country. But there will not be any interest involved with money at all, nor any interest on loans. All interest will be forgiven. All debt will be forgiven. It's very interesting that the Pope has already stated that they want to um, uh, inaugurate a what's called a Jubilee year, which in Catholic canon is a year when all debt is forgiven. All sins are forgiven. Everything it goes back to a state of forgiveness and, and zeroed out. The Pope has actually said this already. And it's very interesting that that's emerging from that source. And that's an outline of, that's supposed to start next year. And that's an outline of the plan that's there and is being implemented and the systems are being, are all developed by the finance ministers of the world. This is all in place. It's very well along in line. The other thing is that the the five BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, have started this new Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and that has now gotten the most of the developed world has signed on as founding members and it is a new bank with a whole new governance structure and it's moved it out of the hands of the control forces that we have and is putting it in the hands of the light alliance and that is one of the cornerstones of the new financial system that's being put in place um, and the other interesting fact just i'm giving you some basic information to show that this there's a there's something really going on here is over the last two and a half years there have been over 2500 ceos cfos and very very senior level executives in banks mutual funds hedge funds and major financial institutions worldwide who have either resigned died been indicted or disappeared that's 2,500. That is 10, t- and people have done statistical analysis of this, it's 10 times the norm. So that there's something major going on within those financial institutions. There's a shift going on. There's new people being brought in who are much more aligned with the Light Alliance. This is part of the, how the transition is, is underway. So it, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but unless you really understand the larger plan underneath it, 
it's hard to put all those pieces together and see what they really mean. It's, you know, it's a massive connecting the dots <laughs> exercise. I have to assume that you come up against people that really challenge this belief. Like in the mental health field, they would probably say, well, this person's suffering from some sort of delusional disorder, paranoia, maybe even a little bit of schizophrenia here. You know, he's mm. talking to some higher beings and has, you know, concocted this fantastical story uh, that is not based in reality. And, you know, you would probably be thrown in an inpatient hospital, which obviously you're not there. And, you know, you're speaking all around the world and, it, you know, you, you prove to be, um, you know, credible in all of this work, but I have to assume that some people say, what's this guy talking about? Well, certainly there are people who, um, uh, you know, just don't accept any of this, and I understand that. I mean, from a traditional, you know, consensus reality point of view, this sounds completely fantastical. I, am, I totally get that. Um, but if people are at all awakened and are paying attention whatsoever, and a huge number of people are not, um, to paying attention to what is going on in the world and looking at it objectively and really trying to understand, well, what is really happening here? Um, there is a very sizable number of people, and I'm talking about millions, millions, hundreds of millions, tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions of people worldwide who know that the system that we are currently living in is there's deeply flawed because it does not reflect the, 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 the hopes and desires and, and concerns and priorities of most people on the planet. It, the system we have benefits a very small number of people and exploits almost everyone else, as you can see if you pay attention. And I think many that's an, I think that's a pretty widely accepted truth at this point in our evolution, which is a wonderful progress we have. Now, people have very different views of what's caused that, but we can say that you know, most people, many people would say there's something going on, there's the, the, the 1% who wants it, wants it all and the rest of us get little or nothing, and that's certainly true. Why that's so, you know, people attribute it just to greed or whatever, and that's also true. But then if you want to go deeper and really understand what, why is that happening, you know, it's been a very carefully developed system of, orchestrated by people who have learned how to take control and manipulate it. And, you know, the financial system through the Federal Reserve is extraordinarily corrupt. It's controlled by a small number of banking families who, who control the Federal Reserve banks, and they are accumulating trillions and trillions of dollars through the interest that is, is collected on every bit of money circulated worldwide that is a, a interest-based currency, which is most all currency in the world. And therefore... That's how they control the system. And they raise the rates or lower the rates or do whatever they want and manipulate the stock market and everything else. And they can do what they want. And they do. And it's all for their own benefit. And I think that's becoming more and more clear to more and more people. What I'm offering is a different view of why this is so. Um, and the causes, the deeper causes. That's where you know most people would not necessarily... Um, agree with that or be able to accept it. One evidence that I can give is if you, anyone who studies the 9-11 event, and there's a tremendous, and I mean really goes into it, go on the internet and start looking at the videos. <clears throat> Look at the video that was created by 40 engineers, architects, and the head of the American Architectural Association, and many, many other engineers and very, very total professional people. And they did a complete two and a half three-hour analysis on video of what happened on 9-11 and, and building seven next to it. And they absolutely conclude conclusively that there's no way that that building could have fallen down the way it did without having explosives planted in it on every single floor and doing a pancaked controlled demolition from top to bottom. That is precisely what happened. It was a planned event. And that is the top professionals in the fields of architecture, engineering, and all these areas are saying this was a controlled demolition. It was a set-up event. And the planes had nothing to do with it. And that is 
a very powerful statement, and it's been made over and over. Of course, it gets almost no coverage in the media, and why is that? Because the media is controlled by the, the what we call the cabal, the, 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 the controlling powers. So it, does, it never comes out in the media. But if you go on the Internet, you will find a massive amount of information about what actually happened on 9-11. And if you assume that those people are not delusional and they are actually being true to their professional credentials and their professional experience, then if that's true, that it was not what the government has told us it is, that alone calls a whole lot of things into question. And it's a very scary scenario. And for that reason, most people do not want to even approach looking at that question because it's too scary. Because if the government can do that to us, oh my God, there's no safety. It's too dangerous here. And they don't want to know that. That's why people don't want to hear about it. And that's what that's why and that helps keep the whole game in place. But more and more very courageous and people, honest people are looking at all this and are saying it's now up in around 60 or 70, I think it's 60 some percent of the American people do not believe the official story about 911. So that's a very important point. And that's that's if that's true, then there's a that's a very powerful uh indicator of something is deeply, deeply wrong with our system and deeply corrupted. And that's true. Does that help? <laughs> yes, thank you. I think it's interesting how you brought up Pope Francis, because I, I was thinking the same thing. And I kind of see it with other things in the mainstream media. Well, not really in the mainstream media, but like Tesla Motor Company. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wouldn't even say motor. It's more like a computer <laughs> on wheels. But it's their whole philosophy is to pretty much, they open source their technology to give it mm -hmm. out to the public mm -hmm. to uh, progress the, uh, that type of technology, where the, uh, the old-fashioned oil companies with the uh, combustible motors are trying to suppress that information. Mm -hmm. And this is all part of it. And even in politics with uh, Bernie Sanders, where he's mm -hmm. being actually uh, suppressed, his information is being suppressed by the mainstream media. Um, yes. Now, this is all part of it, or is this... Absolutely. Okay. The, 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 every every um, Tesla is a wonderful, and, and Elon is a wonderful example of someone who is truly working, trying to work for the good of the whole, and he's bringing out very revolutionary new technologies, as are many, many other people. And one of the most revolutionary of all, of course, is the free energy system, where people, there are, you know, devices to directly uh, tap into the quantum field, you know, and bring that and, and, and access that energy, which there have been many, many inventions, inventions by people all over the world and, and many in this country, most of which have been suppressed by the cabal at this up to now. But because their, their power and control is weakening, um, there is more and more now coming out and there are people who are now making these things more available and people can build them in their own home and create these free energy devices. That is part of the plan. That those, those devices will be freely given ultimately to humanity and we will be able to have energy for everything we need with absolutely zero pollution and no need for any fossil fuels whatsoever. That's coming. And it's not going to be that long. And that is part of the, the huge transformation that will create on our Earth. And so, you know, and, the, and there are many people involved in this, and I know lots of them who are working with this. And it's very important that that happen. That's part of the unfoldment. And um, so, yes, you know, in many fields you look at, um, if you look at the healthcare field, you've had a tremendous amount of control, a tremendous amount of manipulation, and the drug testing is so off, and you know all the, the horrible things done by Monsanto and drug companies and all the stuff that's happened. And now the whole movement for um, holistic health and energy medicine, where people are actually working with their energetic field to you know help their health and to and heal many different issues. And, and, and also becoming aware of the kinds of horrible stuff that's in the food that in, and drinks that are 
pumped to, out to humanity, you know, all the Diet Coke with aspartame and the, and the uh, you know, all the kinds of horrible stuff that go into the foods we eat. If you eat processed food, it's just extremely dangerous for people, and that's the sugar and all of it. You know, all that's being brought to the surface more and more, and more and more people are, are getting wise to that and, and learning to take care of their health in a much more conscious way. That's very essential to part of the plan, too. And, you know, creating, you know, food that's not full of pesticides and chemicals and all that is also there. And, and, and you know, and, and it's just in the media, we have this shift now going on where, you know, more and more people are getting their news off the Internet um, or alternative sources, um, you know, in and, and many, many different ways people are going around the mainstream media, which is controlled, for sure. I mean, and if you look at Bernie Sanders and the, co the coverage of Bernie, you know, you see a direct effort to uh, minimize. He, he, there's all, I mean, the number of stories about Bernie Sanders, I, I read the New York Times every day, and the number of stories about Bernie compared to the number of stories about Trump and, and Hillary and everybody else, is, it's like you never hear about Bernie. He's almost like non-existent. But he's, he's doing incredible a service by raising all these issues in such a powerful way and, with, and gaining more and more support for that. Um, he, you know, he's becoming harder and harder to ignore him. And I thought he did beautifully in the debates, you know, and, and showing what kind of a human being he really is, which was just extraordinary. And um, he really cares about these issues. He understands the issues and he understands the ty kind of control forces that are there and that we have to break that control, which is why he's saying it has to be a political revolution because we have to get all these people who have been given up on the political system because they know how corrupt it is and they see how voting doesn't make that much difference. You get the same thing anyway. Um, and get all these people to come into the political process who have been alienated, and, as, and especially the millennial generation, which is so huge, and get them engaged in the political process and help get them voting. He has a real he has a real chance, and that's what he's trying to do. And he's it's very smart, and he's a very wise and very decent man. And I, I really respect and what he's doing. And he is, you know, his political platform is very, very close also to the plan of the Light Alliance. And somebody did a beautiful little comparison between his statements and the statements of the Pope, 10 different statements, and, there, and there's, the correlations are almost precise. Uh, in 10 different areas of human life, the actual quotes that they're saying, these use different language, but the, what they're saying in essence is, you know, we, we have to have decent jobs, we have to take care of, our, of the poor, we have to take care of the environment, there isn't going to be any future for anybody, on and on, you know, they just correlate completely. And that's how this happens. People get these impressions in their own inner process and in, in their in their heart and mind about what's important what's real and true and they just and they're the same impressions all over the world this is arising in leaders and in ordinary people that this is we have to have a completely new reorganization of the entire system we cannot live this planet will not live under the current system and it won't it is going to be changed there is nothing that can prevent that because the higher level higher order of spiritual organization, I'm talking about the solar system itself, which is a conscious being, and which planet Earth is a chakra of, and a part of, and is influenced by everything that goes on there, is really going to ensure that we do have this new civilization, this new world is going to come into being, and it is rapidly coming into being, both through the removal of the old and the purification of the old and the bringing in of all these new ideas and new systems and new ways of doing things and it's everywhere worldwide and you know and of course <clears throat> people always ask about the middle east which is a quite a horrible situation for many many people there um and there are many aspects to this that are not so obvious one of them is that um we are at the end of a cycle of karma, of the whole karmic wheel. You know, karma being whatever you put in motion any time in your life or life, previous lives through thoughts, words, or actions, you are responsible for the effects 
to bring all of that back into balance. So the Middle East is a place where a lot of karma is being worked out for the people who live there. And actually going through difficult and even terrific, horrific situations is a way to relief, to burn off your own personal karma. And that is what's happening for a lot of people. I know that may sound heartless to some people, but it's it's also a liberation of people of the souls from their karma that they have built up in going through the situations that they do in the Middle East. And it doesn't mean we don't do everything we can to try to ease the suffering and help people to find a, 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 a settlement and a solution. But at the same time, there is a process underway where this karma is being worked out, which li- ultimately liberates those people. And so that's part of it. And the other thing that's very interesting is the the whole refugee immigrant issue in Europe, you know, is really confronting Europe with the reality that you know, the European Union was created on the idea of eliminating boundaries between nations in Europe. And that's all very fine. And they did. And so if you have a, you know, a, a white European skin for the most part, the boundaries are eliminated. But what about all the rest of the nations of the world, especially in the Middle East? Well, now the boundaries with those countries are also being eliminated. And this is a part of the process. This is necessary. The whole idea of boundaries between nations is is a is a outmoded idea. And ultimately, in the long term, those boundaries will be less and less important and will become we will integrate as a worldwide community. That is absolutely what is underway. So I'll just pause for a moment and see if you have any other questions. With the Light Alliance, do they they talk about evolution, but is this the same thing as a, uh, if you go online, you probably read about like the ascension, like the earth is going through the, the ascension. Like every once in a while, there's a big date thrown around. Like I know 2012 was right. the, the huge one for their, and uh and most recently if you went on youtube in the last six months they were talking about september 23rd and Mm -hmm. you know how cern uh the the large uh collider uh, i forget the country that's in but uh switzerland yeah (laughs) yeah switzerland and uh i know the earth is being bombarded by the the x wave gamma ray or whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is this the same type of thing or is this a completely different view of a different type of evolution it, i mean it sounds very similar it, it is similar in certain ways um I, i'll just share what my view of it is um you know definitely there are energies impacting our planet from the the, the core of the galaxy the center of the galaxy uh, on our Earth, there are energies now coming and affecting our planet from the galactic civilizations. Um, and uh, there have always been energies from the spiritual masters who radiate positive energy and love to our Earth to help us evolve. That's always been present. Um, we are in a process of accelerated evolution. That is certainly clear. Um, now, there have been a series of dates that have been given by people who are receiving this information. You know, people receive information at many different levels, and some of it is more accurate than others. And that's up to each of us to discern what is most accurate or clear. And so the idea of 2012 was a gigantic uh, thought in everyone's mind um, based on the Mayan calendar. And um, most people did not experience a tremendous huge shift. The expectations get highly magnified to a level of unrealism that, you know, we're going to have this date and all of a sudden everything is just going to all be done and it's all going to happen. And that happened in 2012. And then again, we had the September 23rd date um, where everything was going to be completely changed with the X waves and all those things. I don't, I did not receive, when I asked about all this, I did not receive that there was going to be anything particular about the September date. And, you know, the, the it, it wasn't. Um, you know, people can, in their own consciousness, fabricate all kinds of ideas about different dates and things like that. It's very 
easy to do. That happens a lot. And so it's like it's hard to know in, in, in making those evaluations about, well, is this real or is it just someone's idea <clears throat> is, is, is a very challenging process. And I'm going to write a whole book about that, about how you evaluate all this kind of stuff. And, um, but in fact, um, I did not receive that the date in September was going to be a big, huge transformation. I did not get that. I got that it was going to be one more, it's a steady progression into a higher states of consciousness. That is definitely going on every day on the planet. And that is, you know, a necessary and ongoing process. And we will move into eventually what, you know, people call ascension is moving into a higher vibrational frequency where you are, in my view, what that looks like is we will access in our consciousness um, high other levels of being, other dimensions, be able to contact and communicate with beings from not on the physical level who exist on the higher spiritual planes, that we will actually have contact with them. We will be able to see and observe and feel the energy that connects all of us with all of life, with each other, with the nature world, Everything will be seen as a, a unified fabric, like a field of energies with these focal points of concentration, which is what we call a human being. But it's all within this vast matrix of love, which is all being held by uh, the, the cosmic energy. Okay? That will be a shift in our capacity for perception. But it doesn't mean that we're going to leave our bodies and go off and not be here anymore. The goal is, and what I've received, is we want to be multidimensional beings. We will be able to function fully in 3D, in the three-dimensional world, as we are now, with a consciousness that is capable of, as we choose, going into other dimensions and experiencing the oneness of life, other beings on other levels, all kinds of other you know, kinds of consciousness and, 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 and experience on, in, in our, in, in, inwardly. That, so we would be much more fully integrated with higher reality and still be in our bodies able to function here and have a life in the physical world. And our primary focus will be on regenerating our planet. And that means ensuring that every human being has food, shelter, clothing, health care, um, opportunities for creativity, and everything they need to live a decent life on this planet. That is definitely part of the plan. And the way that's going to come about is there's going to be a confiscation of all the trillions and trillions of dollars that have been accumulated by the cabal through all the illegal and illicit and very corrupt means to, mass, to pile up massive amounts of money and take that money and use it for... The, the, the well-being of all of humanity. There is a definite plan to do that. Anyone who has money that they have earned legitimately or inherited legitimately, that, that money will not be touched. But the people who have accumulated vast, I mean, it's inconceivable for ordinary people, but they have caves in the mountains where they have barrels and barrels of diamonds and racks of gold. And that's their idea of security. And all that will be taken because it's very humorous to me because the galactic civilizations have the kind of technology where they can detect any substance anywhere on the planet at any depth in, in the world under any kind of shielding. So they will be able to pinpoint exactly where all these great treasure troves are and confiscate all that money and use it for the, all those, that, those, the, that wealth or that you know, things that are worth a lot of money and actually um, make that available to humanity. That is part of the plan. And you know, we will see that happen. And that's going to be very interesting. <laughs> but all of us who have, you know, are honest, hardworking people who are accumulated things in a, in a legitimate way will be fine. There's nothing going to, it's going to be affecting that. It's all about the corrupt practices that have allowed gigantic amounts of accumulation by, and most people don't have any clue, and even the media has never truly reported the, the quadrillions of dollars that some of these families have stashed away 
that from their control of the financial system, their corrupt manipulation, drug trade, human trafficking, on and on. It, it, it is just unbelievable. And people don't really understand what's really there. But all that will be used for the um, support of humanity. And when everybody on this planet is totally convinced and reassured and sees through actual events and evidence that the our basic needs uh, for food, shelter, clothing, health care, affiliation, nice housing, nice communities, all these things are built and created and the financial support is there reliably. Can you imagine the way the subconscious of humanity will relax? Because right now humanity is driven by a massive worldwide subconscious fear of, for survival. And that is a definitely cultivated state of consciousness that has been built up by the cabal in order to uh, keep humanity in fear and therefore can be controlled. When that fear is gone and we no longer have to fear for our survival, then we will be in a different state as a human species and we will be able to be open to all kinds of new possibilities and that we will wake up in the morning and what we will be focused on is what am I going to create today that's going to benefit other human beings and, and nature? That will be our prime directive each day instead of waking up and saying how am I going to get enough money to survive so I'm sure I'm not going to get lose my house or have food on the table or take care of my family which is what underlies what most people are feeling right now does that make sense to you yeah yeah absolutely now d does the light alliance do they give any hard dates or they say oh it's going to take you probably like two more lifetimes before <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not two more lifetimes. Okay. I can tell you that for sure. Um, what I am getting, I, I, it's complicated because there's, there's going to be a certain level of a release of love energy on this planet at a certain time, which is going to be so powerful that only those people who really are resonant with love can actually remain on the planet. That's going to happen when our solar system aligns with six other solar systems, because just as our planet is a chakra in the body of our solar system, our solar system is a chakra in a body of the great, what's called a great heavenly being made up of seven solar systems. There is a process underway of aligning those seven solar systems into a, a, a real alignment where this energy can flow through all seven. When that's completed, there's going to be this tremendous wave of love released on the planet. And that exact date when that's going to occur is not yet um, determined. But what I'm getting is it's, it's not going to be long, far, far into the future. It's, it's on the horizon, okay? I can't give a specific date because I don't know the specific date. But um, it's, it's, it's not long, long into the future. And... Um, when that occurs and that love flows in, everyone will, who will remain on the earth will be aligned with love in some way. It doesn't mean we have to be perfectly loving. It just means that we understand love as a fundamental principle and that there's some degree of resonance with love in our being. That's what will determine our, our ultimate destination when that occurs. And those who do not resonate with love, who are filled with hatred and violence and all those things which we have on the planet, will be lovingly removed from Earth and placed in a system that is, will allow their continued evolution, and the system will be resonant with their state of consciousness, so that each person will go to a place that will allow their further evolution in the context of a, an environment that's matches their own frequency. Does that make sense? I know it's a far out concept, but it, it, is, it is like a natural process of everyone going where they fit. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that does make sense. But I, I'm thinking back to like the, uh, you know, the late 60s and, you know, the, the, what was it, the hippie movement with the peace and love and it was before my time, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> it was in my time. <laughs> okay. But is that was that really the start of this or does that go back 
Well, yes. I mean, it certainly was. There, that, that, that generation, our generation, my generation, came in with that consciousness that the system that we had needed to be opened up, that it was too restricting, it was blocking human creativity and human evolution, because it was so controlled. I mean, we had a great victory after the war. I mean, that was a victory for light. But then what happened was after the war that these controlling forces came back out in, and gained more, ultimately more and more control of the systems. That's what happened. And, you know, Eisenhower warned about the, the um, you know, military industrial complex and, you know, being very, you know, all that kind of stuff. He was trying to tell the public about this, but no one really paid much attention or they didn't, you know, he wasn't understood. And... So we had this buildup with all the wars. We've had the Vietnam War and all the other wars we've had. You know, it's just a continuation of that same thing. And, but, you know, now what's happening is because the control of these darker forces has been removed, their engagement has been removed, they've been removed. Now we're just dealing with the human beings who collaborated with them and they don't have the same degree of power. And there is also this tremendous amount of support being given by the spiritual masters, by the galactic civilizations, by the solar system itself. And all that is actually stimulating this tremendous awakening, which we've seen happen. You know, it happened in the Arab Spring. It's happening in the United States. It's happening all over the world. And people are waking up and saying, this is not working. It's not good. We've got to change all these things more and more. That's occurring. And the corruption is becoming more evident to everyone. And that's necessary because people have to be aware of the fact that you can't just put Band-Aids on our current system. We have to completely reorganize and redo it. And as that corruption be, is revealed, people come to the places saying, yeah, we have to, they'll be open to the plan for a complete new way of organizing it with the kind of uh, parameters that I've been discussing. That's necessary to get humanity to see how dysfunctional and corrupt the current system is, which is now pretty much in evidence. You know, when you can have the Koch brothers and other super wealthy uh, funders decide who is going to be the candidates, you know, gerrymander the whole system so the Republican extremists cannot be uh, uh, removed from office in the Congress, on and on. All this stuff shows how corrupt the system is, and that's really going to change. Great. Well, thank you so much, Gordon, for coming on our show and just talking about a very interesting topic. Um, would you like to let people know where they can find your book and information? Yes, 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 I certainly would. Um, we have a website um, called worldtransfiguration.com. And on that website, you can, or, and you can order my book, World Transfiguration, How a Light Alliance is Transforming Darkness and Creating a New Earth. From that site, it's on Amazon. That's we work with Amazon, and you, it's, it's available as an ebook and Kindle and Nook and iBooks, or as a hardcover or a paperback. And um, I'm also offering a ongoing webinar called the Galactic News: Updates from the Light Alliance, and I will be doing a monthly program on the internet where you can sign up for. The first one is free. Um, to hear what is the latest that I am receiving about what is happening on the planet and the plan and how it's unfolding on the on Earth. And that will be available. The first show will be November 7th. So you can go to our website, worldtransfiguration.com, and sign up for that. And for, it's free, the first one. And then you can see if you like it and continue. It's, it's like $15 a, sh a month um, or uh, six months for $75. So it's, a, it's a not expensive, and it just gives you an update of what is actually going on from this perspective that I'm offering and gives you a, a clear understanding of what do all these events that are going on mean, how is it working, how is it unfolding, and where are we with all that. And I also do a brief meditation and give people tools on how they can help raise their frequency, be more joyful, and, and have a very positive view of our future, which is very important because our view, how we hold the future, is creative as we are learning, is that, in that our, we have the power in our consciousness to actually create the future we hold and imagine and 
think about and live it in. And by creating that vision of our future and being there with it, that actually helps make it happen. Great. Thanks so much, Gordon. You're welcome. If you'd like more information about our films or to purchase our DVDs, you can head on over to our website at thepastseries.com. They're also available to purchase on amazon.com. Our films are also streaming online at vimeo.com, guyamtv.com, and iTunes. If you have a show suggestion or would like us to interview someone specifically, please feel free to shoot us an email at info at thepastseries.com or send us a tweet at thepastseries. Please rate and review us in iTunes and subscribe. We hope you enjoyed the show.